There's no better experience in Shogun 2 than listening to bullets shred through samurai and watching long pointy sticks impale that Ashigaru pussy. Our weapons made sure to work of that. Bah! A shameful display! Hey, I'm Triple C Hacker, and welcome to the complete guide to Pike and Shot Warfare in Total War Shogun 2. In this glorious game, Pike and Shot Warfare revolves around the obvious. Yari walls, pike, and matchlock units, shot. But there's much more to it. Just glancing at the land battle group formations in the encyclopedia, there are elements of pike and shot displayed in all of them, with the matchlocks on the front line supported by spears. Speaking of being supportive, if you love Shogun 2, then you'll love my channel. So please subscribe. It would mean a lot, and I truly appreciate any support. Pike and Shot has been an integral part of Shogun 2, and specifically in multiplayer for quite some time. And its main champion and innovator is Sun Lisa, who, along with Voland, another Shogun 2 content creator like myself, wrote this Steam guide. Now, for the purpose of this video, I'm going to cover only the highlights, but I recommend you read this fully as it not only covers Pike and Shot Warfare, but also gives some tips on Avatar Conquest. I've left a link to it in the description. So this is the large, fabulous Bird Flow Art of War Shogun Team Multiplayer Avatar Conquest Advanced Gameplay System. And in the preface here mentions that Shogun Team Multiplayer, specifically with Avatar Conquest, was the peak of Total War Multiplayer, which is true. And obviously Shogun 2 is the best Total War game out there. The best summary of the entire system is here. So the large fabulous bird flow art of war is the school of Shogun 2 gameplay, a system that utilizes the combination of skirmishers, yari wall, melee, and columns, and an encompassing formation that mimics a large fabulous bird to win games. As I was recording this, I noticed that I got invited to be a contributor of this guide, which is rather ironic and fitting timing as I was recording this and just noticed that. I naturally accepted, even though I didn't contribute much to this document directly, but I guess I'm associated to it in some ways, so um, it's an honor and uh, just accepted because it's just, you know, polite. Sorry for that little tangent. Let's continue. So here we have an excellent visualization of an army composition with the bird flow in action. As you can see, there's a lot of great units there. The core component being the pike, shot, and sword that I've circled. And you can see the three separate columns of them, along with all the other associated units that the guide will go further into. If you go to the Shogun 2 basics, these are just the things you need to know. Some Avatar Conquest related things, because again, this guide focuses on that. But if you're not interested in Avatar Conquest, that's okay because this guide does apply to your campaigns and multiplayer classic battles, which I'll show in the battle replays after I go through this full guide. And here we have some uh, helpful resources and Triple Z Hackers Unit Tier List, Retainer Guide, General Build Guide, Army Composition Guide. And who's this Triple Z Hacker guy? Must be some bum that should upload to his YouTube channel more frequently. <laughs> Kidding, uh, it's an honor to have my videos on this list. Of course, there's also some other great videos here as well, like Zarip is an excellent Shogun 2 YouTuber. Keep going, we have another visualization of an army composition with some retainers. We have a bow general. Bow general is really good with this pike and shot format because the extra range is really nice and the bow general is disgustingly good because it can just kill anything and it's actually really good at killing some of the most elite units in the game. This just talks about getting started in Avatar Conquest. Oh, we have the Long Chad Ashigaru here as well. So these are just the associated units. We have the Portuguese Tercios. Obviously, European units are broken. And then we... Oh my god, these fuckers are so disgustingly good. Mounted Gunners and Donderbuss Cav. Very excellent unit. You know, the best unit to obtain Cav Superiority. Cav Superiority is really good with Pike and Shot. Um, have Fire Cav as well, um, Spears of Shizu Katake, so again, two other units that are essential for basically achieving Cav superiorities. Um, I know most of these are like DLC units, but even without the DLC, you can still pull off Pike and Shot, by the way. Daiku Samurai as well, long range, high damage, best bow unit in the game, exactly. Bulletproof Samurai, also excellent as well. Waka Raiders too, a uh, very cheap, effective unit. Um, here's some other Avatar things, we'll just skip through this. Here we go, so the army components core. So this talks about the battle unit. Essentially, you have a line of matchlocks um, with their indiscriminate killing power and solid field control, along with the tight formation of Yari wall. Their strategic leverage and solid mass unit of katanas as well to deliver a decisive blow. So again, uh, this whole thing about field control or battlefield control is very essential to pike and shot. 
and I'll show that more in the battle replays after this. All right, so here we have the match locks, the shot, of course, and pike and shot. So they deliver the devastating killing power, single most tactical unit in the game with the ability to kill formidable fighters with only a few volleys. Totally revolutionizes the game. Long reload time makes it hard to use as they could be forced out of positions easily. But a match lock is capable of delivering 100 kills even before the engagement takes place, rendering the most expensive melee units useless. The key is to be able to secure their position as um, the threat of field control generated by this killing power is formidable. So again, talking about battlefield control and positioning, two key concepts to remember. Match locks, obviously amazing because bullets can kill everything. Then we have the uh, Yari Wall. Again, amazing ability, obviously. Yari Wall just makes Yari Ashigaru very cost effective and also can be really strong as long as they don't get outflanked and maintain a reasonable morale. Good at holding enemy charges as well as tanking certain enemies that allow your match locks to again get more volleys off. So obviously Yari Wall is the pike that works with the shot. And then we have the melee grinder here. So these are the sword units in that column that I showed earlier. So with their high attributes, ideal charging from the flanks, melee grinders are the ones that deliver the decisive blow in the most humble and straightforward means, which require no APM. And I'll show you why Bonsai is a really good ability when using Pike and Shot and how it works in the battle replays after we go through this entire guide. It also mentions that uh, the melee grinder is potentially the most vulnerable unit as they need protection from range volleys and cav charges. Therefore, it is recommended to use combined arms to cover and create situations for these chads. Again, another key concept to remember with Pike and Shot combined arms so you have battlefield control positioning and combined arms that is the melee grinder if we go here talks about coordination so again this works with combined arms coordination is everything because the units must be used together to support each other otherwise the whole thing doesn't work as a combined arms army is not going to be stronger at melee than a naginata spam army but you have all the tools to create the right situation and compete where the enemy is the weakest keep going have some more visuals then we have the army component score with the unit variations so here are some tier lists. These are tier lists associated with Avatar Conquest, but they do apply to your campaigns as well as classic multiplayer battles. If you're playing your campaigns, depends on the clan that you're playing as, which units you use. And now we have the battlefield maneuvers. So these are the basic maneuvers. We just have defensive, offensive, and tactical withdrawing. Basically, these are different types of things you can do in the middle of battle, and uh, definitely recommend you guys read up on this a little bit more. When you're withdrawing, you basically want to prevent an army from charging into you quickly before you establish your positions. And in an offensive maneuver, you want to initiate the charge with your melee infantry, and then have your guns support them from behind. You you also have the defensive maneuver which again you just continue to have matchlock volleys and then have your melee units tank charges so your matchlocks can continue to fire through the gaps moving on we have the advanced maneuvers here this has to do with the different types of positions your army or this system takes in the midst of battle and there are a variety of different options at your disposal that sun mentions essentially all of them perform different functions or have to do with a different situation you will face in your battle the main thing to keep in mind is that the shape shifts constantly and endlessly so it's very fluid. Most people think Pike and Shot is very rigid, but in reality, there's a lot more nuance to it. And I'll show a lot of these different um, maneuvers in the battle replays that I have for you guys. Moving on, we have the auxiliary roles. So again, these are a variety of roles that units take on. So we have first the fodders. So these are cheap units to initiate trading, support cab fights, or holding significant positions. And the main thing to keep in mind is, although it does say fodder, you don't want to waste their lives. You want to make sure their efforts secure you the strategical upper hand. Um, this is obviously for Avatar Conquest, but most of you will be using Yari Ashigaru in this role. Light cab as well is really good for their reconnaissance, as well as just charging down enemies for some quick kills, harassing, and distracting. Acting. Now we have the flanker here. So this is the versatile units on the flank, good at supporting cav, securing key buildings, distracting enemy forces, and flanking towards the end of the battle. So bulletproof samurai obviously the best because of their anti-cav abilities as well as their ability to effectively trade with most other infantry units aside from sword units. As well you have monks here too, warrior monks as well being a really excellent flanker because of their war cry ability. Obviously they don't have the armor or protection so they're vulnerable but still excellent choice now we have the hammer so this is the heavy cav these are for hammer and anvil tactics they're a very effective and devastating kidding force that give ample field control so battlefield control and obviously their fight for cav superiority is essential because cav superiority basically guarantees victory for pike and shot warfare so fire cav obviously the best yari cav Great guards would be better than the fire cav one on one obviously but this is you know taking into account cost effectiveness for avatar conquest 
Then we have the uh, roamers here. These are the disgusting mounted gunners right there. Look at this dude. So the mounted range units used for battlefield control. They score free kills all day given the right situation and create a defensive initiative that forces the enemy to advance on your position. They're great at taking out other mobile forces. They're really good at securing calf superiority, obviously. Most versatile role in the system. This unit right here makes pike and shot immensely broken in Avatar Conquest. Definitely recommend trying bow cav more often in your armies. They're very versatile and very annoying. Donderbuss don't have the range that the other two have, but still good enough as well for pike and shot. Then we have the rangers here. So this is your bow unit. Long range bow securing field control for the army. They're used along with and against matchlocks. They're very good at sniping from afar. They need lots of field control and support to avoid being charged head on as they do not have enough stopping power unlike matchlocks. So if they're getting charged by cav, your bow units are going to be at a disadvantage obviously, whereas matchlocks can get a volley off before they get charged by cav sometimes. So used in combination with the matchlocks is important because matchlock and bows go hand in hand as they support each other's battlefield control and compensate each other's weaknesses. Matchlocks are fast at killing but come with a shorter range and require direct sight. Bows are much slower but have a longer range and can fire over an arc. And Daikyu Samurai are the best bow unit in the game by far. They actually do extra damage with their arrows. I think it's like 0.4 versus 0.3 damage. I'd have to look in the files again. Um, I'll probably correct myself in a later video, but in reality, they're the best bow unit. The rest of the bows obviously are great, but this bow unit is used for trading, and I'll show you more of the Daiki roll or bow units in general with the battle replays as well. Now we have the flexor here. So this section right here basically describes several other units you can use in conjunction with the units above. Really good and recommend you guys read that. Talks about the variations as well. Talk about how to deploy your auxiliaries as well. You want them to do their job, which is they work together to get free kills, exploit by distracting, harassing, skirmishing, disoriented, or bullying weaker units. You want to take advantage of the different matchups you have or different situations that present themselves in battle with your auxiliaries. Continuing on, we get to the large fabulous bird for the art of war section. Basically discusses what tactics you would employ when facing specific unit types. Again, I'm going to reference this in the battle replay section. Highly recommend you guys read this though. I'm gonna scroll some further here. Now we have the battle phases. So in nearly any game, the standard battle process applies, just like chess openings in Shogun 2, you do a certain set of moves in a series. So for starters, spread out like a bird to flap its wings to propel itself into the sky. Your army needs to do the same at the start of the game. Form a wide solid front line to maximize your battlefield control and move forward to secure key positions. So again, battlefield control, controlling the space on the battlefield is essential for pike and shot. Then you have the standoff, so this is the skirmishing phase where you have your auxiliaries start to harass and distract your opponents. Then the shape shifting, so these are the different maneuvers that I mentioned earlier in the guide. Then you have the engagement, reorganize and re-engage, and then the cleaning up or the victory. Continuing onward, we get to the large fabulous bird flow principles. These principles are from the likes of Confucius to Sun Tzu. They're all excellent. I highly recommend you guys read this. I'm only going to reference these though in the battle replays later. So for now, I'm going to skip through them. And if we keep going, we get to the finale, which is the build book. And here are the variety of army compositions or builds used in Avatar Conquest by Sun. They're tried and proven and excellent for Avatar Conquest, and they epitomize the bird flow system. Obviously, for your campaigns or multiplayer battles that are in classic mode, you want to emulate these to the best of your abilities. But that is the end of the Steam Guide here. Once again, I've left a link to this in the description below. Be sure to read this. Huge thank you to Sun and Voland for making this guide as it's one of the best out here and really extensive, well thought out and articulated by Sun himself. Now it's time to see the bird flow system as well as Pike and Shot Warfare in action. So I have some battle replays for you guys where I fought Sun myself and I'm going to reference this guide extensively for it. So I hope you guys enjoy that. Before I go into the battle replays, I wanted to cover how to set up and control the Pike and Shot army while in battle. So before we start the battle here, going to assign our groups. Get all the heavy cav here. So this is the cav superiority contingent. Assign them to a group. Get our two roamers here. So gun cav, any range cav really. Assign to a group. Then we'll have our two flankers here. So the Yachty Samurai. Assign them to a group. We get the bow samurai here as well. Can assign them to the group. Move the general out of the way, they don't really need to be in group. And now we have, of course, the core of the army being the three columns of pike and shot infantry. So get our matchlocks there. 
the Ashigaru there are Pike, and then finally the Nodachis, and there's the first group there. This one will be the center, so Matchlock's there. And there we go, second group, and then the final group will be on the right flank here. And once we've got these all nice and positioned accordingly, can readjust, of course. And from here, just do everything how you wish, and now we can start the battle. So at the start, you have these group orders here. Don't really worry about those too much, but for the main thing, you can press control and then double click, and you can see they're all running in formation, like so. And you can even say retreat as well. You just have to make sure you press control. And you can see I single clicked there, so they're only walking. You can double click as well. As it's just, you know, nice to have them all stay in that formation throughout the entire time. Um, if you don't control click, they won't stay in the formation. So we'll move them as well. Other thing you can do is you can hold spacebar here to see where your units are going. That's another important thing. And so at the beginning of the battle, like Sun mentions, you just spread out. So that's why our pike and shock columns are very far out. And another thing you can do too is notice right here, once we adjust with the turning as well, you can see that you can reposition your troops like so. You can even have them retreat as well in this formation, which is nice too. They'll readjust accordingly. You can see that all the match locks get to the front over here instead where they were before. So just very simple stuff but practice around practicing the micro especially helps for the battles but um, this is a great way of course to adjust to learning this pike and shot type of combat so i hope you guys found this informative all right now it's time to get into the battle replays welcome to the battle replay section of this guide so here we have a battle between sun lisa playing as the tokugawa with the pike and shot army versus myself playing as the Ikoiki with a rush army. So lots of heavy infantry and cav just trying to rush down the opponents. Of course, going to be focusing on the pike and shot army from the get-go. So already you can see that Sun Lisa is doing exactly what his guide says, which is the bird flapping its wings. You can see the three columns of pike and shot infantry all spread out. You can see the cav rushing over this way as well. So already trying to establish as much space as possible in control over the battlefield. And while watching these battle replays, keep in mind these four key elements when it comes to pike and shot warfare. So we have battlefield control, we have coordination, combined arms, and lastly, positioning. Those four elements are essential when it comes to pike and shot warfare. And already this kind of emulates the army of Flanders, so to speak, with the uh, Tercios. And here's a nice image of the army of Flanders here at the Battle of Nguyen Port in 1600. So you can already see kind of uh, some similarities here with how troops are spaced out and everything like that with the bird flow system so it has a historical precedent as well you can see the roamers here so the mounted gunners and bow cav already getting into position get some volleys off any kill is a good kill and um with the auxiliaries in the pike and shot warfare system or the bird flow there is of course this principle that i didn't cover with the steam guide but i'm going to show this graphic here which is smoke and mirrors uh, from Sun Tzu, I believe. And basically what it says is that you want to exploit, harass, everything like that. Things I've already mentioned, but on a greater level, you want to bait your opponents to attacking you. You want to assume a defensive stance and bait them or lure them into a traps. And basically you want to get some effective trades where you can trade some of your units for others and inflict losses without losing many men at all it's a very effective method of fighting and it's very protracted and long type of warfare you can see again just a lot of repositioning scuffles here even then getting into position with some units since i have no missile units i'm at a disadvantage here and probably should just push for the engagement but in reality, um, I expected Sun to come contest this high ground with me as well. But instead, Sun opted to play with the train over on this side of the battlefield and went for the better of the two key buildings. Already though, the mounted gunners did get a volley off on some monks. You can see their dead bodies over there. And yeah, you can see already they're doing exactly their job, which is harassing baiting me into attacks. And... 
That's key. And you can see the coordination here as well. Not allowing their roamers to get trapped by cav as well. And having infantry to back up the cav fight. So, uh, you know, that famous Waterloo quote, which is, <laughs> he can't uh, charge with cav without infantry support. How can a man go forward with the cavalry without infantry support? You know, Marshal Ney and his famous charge. <laughs> I digress. Anyways, though, the Pike and Shot army here, again, has relatively defensive position. The terrain obviously has an impact on how the battle is fought. So, again, the terrain is essential here. Blocking off the passage. These are a little out of position, but it doesn't really matter too much. Again, this is still in the early phases of the battle. Still waiting for the actual engagement period. You can see the Cav already trying to exploit the enemy here. And the Roamers reposition on the battlefield. My Cav going this way. But you can see just the battlefield control that this unit has as well. These guns have. And even the mounted gunners to some extent over here. The way they're able to reposition anywhere on the battlefield. I mean, they're absolutely broken, I mentioned. But they can reposition anywhere on the battle and just do a variety of things. That's essential. Even getting these free volleys off on uh, the monks here as well. You can see I do catch some great guard here as well. So I actually get a good amount of kills. So overall, pretty good trade for me. But in reality, you can see <laughs> oh, this was a pretty bad charge by myself. But just trying to charge into the matchlocks, trying to cause some confusion and stuff. Ultimately lost me a uh, warrior monk cav, which... Costs about the same as Matchlock Samurai, but you can see the effectiveness of the Pike Squares there as well in deterring any frontal assaults with Cav. So, hard to engage there. Obviously, just charging down straight uh, from this hill, attacking this engagement would be the best option, but there's also the different maneuvers that Sun can employ in the battle. And, yeah, you can see the positioning here, the mounted gunners as well, just controlling so much the battlefield space that I have to divert Cav over to here to watch this flank and getting free kills exploiting the smoke and mirrors as I've mentioned and here's a little clip of how to deal with just infantry focused armies for pike and shot great pointers and stuff I didn't cover that earlier in the guide so wanted to have that for you but yeah you can just see all this harassing distracting and baiting and even then you can see the withdrawing here by the Tokugawa forces so Sun Lisa is doing a great job of repositioning before my infantry to get over here. Of course, I'm trying to just um, contest this key building here in the battle itself. You can see Cav chasing Cav. Let's watch this Cav fight right here. So um, again, here's a nice example of just two Cav units taking on only some light Cav. So this is just taking advantage or exploiting weaknesses of your opponent. And that's what the Pike and Shot army does. And, you know, for myself, kind of wanted to just distract the cav forces. You can see an even bigger cav fight happening way over here. Gosh, not going to worry. Monk cav fighting off some great guard. Probably not going to win that engagement at all. And cav superiority is really important. So you can see that Iko Iki struggled with cav superiority. So going to struggle, obviously, winning this battle with not great cav to begin with. And, um... Yeah, you can see the mounted gunners here. Just look at this this great position right here. Firing into, of course, the charge. And uh, at this point, basically battle's lost for me. You can see just the positions really, really good here for the matchlocks. And here's an example of... Watch this Ashigar unit right here as well. This is a great example of what Sun's talking about with... Um, Assuming the defensive maneuver here essentially just having the Ashigar sit here and tank the oncoming assault So you don't want to blob up your infantry like this Obviously you want to try to flank around the Yari walls. You can see the matchlocks shooting into the gaps And even then you got another matchlock line here. That's repositioned to fire as well. You got the general kind of relatively vulnerable position, but overall, yeah you know, see, it's masterful work here, having this position, having the hill. Even though I have the key buildings, it's not really going to matter. Because I've already lost most of my cav contingent. And the matchlocks are going to be relatively decisive. Um, you can see, even though the Ashigaru are going to break and losing troops, they're holding. Which give the matchlocks time to shoot more volleys. And again, most of the cav is still alive. And, uh, yeah, this is just textbook example of... How to bird flow. You watch some of the battle too, and <laughs> mounted gunners obviously 
made this impossible. No missile units versus mounted gunners is just purely nightmarish, especially on a map that enables you to take advantage of terrain like this. And um, the other thing, too, to keep in mind with these Nodachis is that uh, their ability to have bonsai is really good because at some point you'll see that right as they're about to break or whenever they're low in terms of manpower, you'll pop the bonsai and it will pretty much just enable them to tank and do exactly what the Ashigaru are doing. I think this Ashigaru is like, oh my god, it finally broke, jeez. I think it even glitched out too. It's not even breaking fully. It's hilarious. <laughs> you see, oh my gosh, just desperate cav charge. Actually, no, this is a flank by the Tokugawa. I almost thought that was the Iku Iki. Whoops. Yeah. There's a nice flank by Tokugawa Yari cav just breaking up my front line there. And yeah, just oh, look at these matchlocks just raining hell down on these monks. There you have it. That was the first battle to show you guys. So, again, textbook example of pike and shot at its finest using all those things you saw the coordination you saw the positioning even the battlefield control so now it's time to get into the next battle replay how to beat this system how to beat the bird flow all right so this is the second battle replay and uh, for this battle this is going to be from my perspective playing as the mori here brought a relatively rush like army with this time a few matchlock samurai as well we have Sun over here with the bird flow in the Chosokabe form. So you can see again these columns, Pike and Shot right there as well. This time, of course, with monks actually in the rear, interesting enough, not with the uh, standard Nodachis that we see because it's got some Daikus as well. So this time, bow focused as well with the bird flow. And of course, you can see the classic bird flow startup, so spreading out wide here contesting all the different points as well have some bow cab over here for the shrine but um doesn't seem like there's too much i sent monks over to the shrine they kind of regret this decision in the battle <laughs> uh, but i digress talking about the pike and shot obviously and so again classic setup here and from the beginning you can see the battlefield control that they have these matchlocks control so much space right here because this cav can't really move this direction they're going to get shot can't attack from the front they're going to get shot so again, battlefield control, the positioning, um, staying within distance of this key building so that you can obviously just uncapture it if necessary. You can see the bows moving over as well. Slow, deliberate gameplay here by Sun to just keep things together. Of course, I myself brought matchlocks this time of my own in hopes to trade with uh, Sun's matchlocks and uh, already not going too well for me as I'm letting the Daikus just murder them. <laughs> Take a few casualties and retreat back. Of course, over there, the bow calves um, doing what they can against those poor monks who um, unfortunately are taking a lot of casualties. Again, poor decision by myself. Um, some bad gameplay on my part. <laughs> but uh, it is whatever. Regardless, you can see, again, um, repositioning here as well to get more concentrated as it's cleared that going to get the farmhouse right here as well as the shrine won't be captured anytime soon because of the standoff here. And eventually my monks will have to withdraw and you can see cav as well supporting here i send some cav over to deal with that bow cav obviously and for now i keep my position here you can see some matchlocks fired as well slowly moving this way and the daikus also have some battlefield control of their own because of their range watch them shoot a volley too and repositioning here just nice little readjustment by sun there as well, you got this matchlock unit controlling so much space. Of course, I have Bocav of my own as well, getting a few free volleys too. So it's nice to fight fire with fire sometimes. And again, use the Pike and Shot army's advantages to its disadvantage. So again, you want to just do what you can to either emulate their style or find some other workarounds. But again, the Bocav is a nice addition to doing that. You can see this Cav force could probably chase after the bocav but again distracting them in different areas distracting your opponents you can see these matchlocks taking <laughs> severe damage already but just trying to get in position to shoot again my whole focus is to just overwhelm as much as i can on this side and just keep distracting over here so chasing with light cav this way you can see already that i'm going to basically close the distance and try to limit the pike and shot army's battlefield control 
and catch them out of position as well. You can see already that they're semi out of position here. You can see the monks already charging, but I mean, I don't know why these matchlocks didn't shoot. What the heck? I didn't even realize they charged into battle. Actually crazy, but again, trying to catch this section out of position, defeat in detail. As I've mentioned, where you have a small little group of a main army out of position. You can see even the cav over here, so just tightening my grip around the controlled battlefield. As well, you can see the Great Guard charges here. As well, ooh, they might actually get a clean charge on me. Oh man, oof. Not that great on my side, but you can see over here going relatively well. We've got Ashigar fighting Ashigar. You can see cav charge right over here as well, just straight towards the general. Just trying to cause panic and confusion and chaos as much as I can to overwhelm my opponent. And it's working to some degree. You can see already compared to last battle, this battle, how little space the Chosakabe have to operate. How little space this Pike and Shot army has to maneuver and reposition. You can already see that even though I'm taking a lot of losses, I'm approaching from all different angles and weakening their ability to retreat and reposition. You can see again this defensive blob here as well. Again, very reminiscent of the previous battle. Even here you can see more engagements with the cav. Uh, more cav returning over here. Cav coming from this side with the bow cav as well. Get the general involved and the Waka Raiders are going to do their work. Of course, I have the workshop and then the shrine is controlled by nobody. I'm uncapping the farmhouse as well, but just trying to overwhelm and rush your opponent. You can see even now the Chosakabe's cav force is relatively depleted. You can also see that these matchlocks are way out of position. I mean, look at them. They're not going to fucking shoot anything at this angle. They're actually getting charged by calves. So again, just overwhelming the Pike and Shot army has a huge advantage in your battles. Even losing units and just distracting them it's beneficial and this is a poor angle and of course you can see these daikus are now getting attacked by infantry as well and even though the battle still hangs into the balance it's relatively clear that you can see there's definitely a difference in fighting this as opposed to the previous battle of course the gun cav makes a significant difference but it's only one factor and regardless it's important to note that i have the high grounds Height, height advantage as well, and the Chosakabe very thin spread out. It's um, definitely advantageous if you can defeat the Pike army in detail and overwhelm them and attack from all sides, really limit their battlefield control, make them have to reposition into bad positions, and try to just see if you can out micro it. That's the best thing you can really do with this Pike and Shot army. Um, the other thing you can do is you could try to, of course, outrange it as well and just out missile it but again that's definitely depends on the clans and the battle itself you can see even though these units are holding here and they're getting some shots off it isn't enough there's still so much more forces of course this is the biggest fucking infantry blob ever <laughs> kind of bad gameplay on my part but the point being is that um most of my forces are still intact after those early engagements and still pushing they're going to keep retreating i still have match locks on my own Cav force is relatively depleted though, which is not the greatest thing as the Chosakabe still have some calves, so um, battle isn't completely over yet, but the Chosakabe general, which is the main thing, is being assaulted and you can look closer here. I mean, just look at the fucking carnage too. Oh my god, so many dead bodies and yeah, the general is shattered. And that's really crucial to the battle because morale is everything. And once the general is shattered, most of these units will likely shatter as well. Um, of course, it's not completely over yet, as there still are some units alive. Of course, I have to get my own general away from the Great Guard chasing me, bring some matchlocks over there to uh, deal with that. But regardless, you can tell a significant difference in this battle in comparison to last battle, where again, taking advantage of the momentum you have against the Pike and Shot army, really working the terrain to your advantage. Notice that I attacked from uh, uphill slope into downhill as well as catching them out of position, defeat in detail, overwhelming your opponents, making them out micro you. You can see Sun relatively played similar to his style and to how the bird flow was, but ultimately got bogged down in the center area with a lack of space. And the Pike and Shot army needs space. It needs lines of sights for its matchlocks to be able to fire. It needs battlefield control. And it needs excellent positions. So again, 
this is how you defeat the bird flow. This battle obviously continues for quite a bit as there's still some disparate uh, units left fighting, but the main thing to point out is that, again, the bird flow system is an excellent, well thought out, ingenious method that utilizes pike and shot very effectively in Shogun 2, but it is not invincible, and this is obviously one of the ways that you can defeat it albeit it was quite a struggle. Anyways, you guys, I hope you enjoyed these battle replays. I have plenty of more, and we'll be discussing the bird flow system and showing off pike and shot warfare in Shogun 2 in the future. Pike and shot in Shogun 2 requires immense precision and finesse, but once mastered, its consistent effectiveness in battle is unmatched. Again, I've left a link to the Steam Guide in the description, so be sure to check that out. Also, comment below which guides you would like to see next on my channel. I hope you found this video both entertaining and informative. As always, subscribe for more Shogun 2, and take care.